Jesus' suffering on the cross is a picture difficult to understand. He was betrayed by a friend, arrested, and falsely sentenced to death, but Jesus never looked back. He kept going. Jesus could have avoided the cross, called down fire from heaven, or summoned legions of angels to rescue him, to save him. But Jesus was not interested in saving himself. He was all about saving you. Every detail of this torturous path to the cross was part of God's plan to bring you to Him. We're all broken. We've all messed up and have all made wrong choices. And no one had to teach us as a baby about anger and selfishness. We just came out that way. Sort of a sin covering. But on the cross, with His blood He shed, the Bible says Jesus blotted out our record of sin, nailing it to His cross. The blood of Jesus washes away our sin covering. And His blood is our ticket. Our ticket to enter through a new door, a forever relationship door with God. So what do we do with this great news? The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You see, it's not enough to believe in Jesus with just your head. You must believe with your heart. Now, there's just one person alone at the foot of the cross. It is you. What will you say to Jesus? Say, thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood for me. I'm giving you my heart today, Jesus. I do believe you died for me and that you were raised from the dead for me. Please give me a new heart and a new life right now. Jason Blood Church coming to you today. God bless each and every one of you. Go and do a video. Hope you find it to be a blessing. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. We're a group of Bible-believing Christians. We rightly divide the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2.15 tells us to study that Bible, not just read it. Get saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus, he died on the cross and the Messiah 2,000 years ago where he he died, he buried, and he rose from the dead three days later. You need to believe that, as well as the blood being shed for the remission of your past, present, and future sins. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10 says, simply believe your whole heart. And then Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9 lets us know it's not a works, unless any man can boast. So taking a look at, just thinking out loud about the times we live in, and there is a lot of confusion on, on verses that people believe are relevant d directly to the church. Now, I do think, spiritually speaking, there's a lot of similarities, and you could spiritually apply this to our time. But I think, and the reason I think you can do that is because we're getting closer to the tribulation, and these times are about the tribulation. So as we get closer to the tribulation, the, the times that we live in will reflect the scriptures, for example, in Matthew and Mark and other places in the Old Testament that are Second Advent tribulation-type verses. For example, Mark 13, the Olivet Discord, Jesus is talking to the Jews, and Jesus came for the Jews to bring in the kingdom. So it could be about that tribulation period that brings in the kingdom. So let's let's read a little bit. We're going to skip verse down to verse three, and this is Jesus talking to you know talking to his disciples in verse one, and so that's the context in verse three. And he sat upon the Mount of Olives over against the temple. Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately. Um, notice Judas Iscariot is not present, which I think is interesting. Uh, verse four, tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled? So these are the questions that they were asking Jesus. And Jesus answering them began to say, take heed lest any man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And when ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be ye not troubled, for such things must need, needs be, but the end shall not be yet. And this, to me, sounds very familiar with our time. Like, when you read that, I could definitely apply that to us. Um, I do believe uh, we are hearing rumors of wars. We are seeing many false Christ showing up. Uh, we have seen that over over time. But when we get to about eight, it, I think you know we've seen this in the past with kingdoms replacing kingdoms. As Jesus revealed the history of the church age to um, Nebuchadnezzar in that statue in Daniel, 
But verse 8, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be earthquakes in diverse places, and there shall be famines, troubles. These are the beginning of sorrows. So this is either early tribulation or church age. You can apply that to both, you know, I think here one through eight pretty well. But when I think you get to nine, now you start to get definitely into the the tribulation, probably the second half, the great tribulation. Uh, that's what I. That's how I read it. Uh, verse nine, but take heed to yourselves for they shall deliver you. So this would be Jews. Remember, he's talking to Jews. There's no Christian church at the time. Jesus hasn't died yet. He shall deliver you up to the councils and in the synagogue. Ye shall be beaten, and ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. And the gospel must first be published amongst all nations. Now, he's not talking about the church age doctrine of salvation through blood. Remember, they didn't know that at that time. So this is, again, a, t a context to tribulation, and that's to Matthew 24, 14 is your cross-reference to Mark 13, 10. So Matthew 24... And verse 14, if we turn over there, and if you follow through your Bible, that'd be great. And it reads at Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, In this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Well, what was Jesus talking about um, earlier in Mark chapter 13? He was asked when these things shall be and what shall be the sign of the end, essentially is what they're asking about. So in verse Mark 13, 10, and the gospel must first be published among all nations. So that, that will be in the tribulation. So you got to remember, there's going to be a, angels, uh, an angel at least, flying around giving the uh, Revelation 14, 16 gospel, um, the everlasting gospel. You're going to have the two witnesses. You're going to have the 144,000 Jews testifying of Jesus Christ and not taking the mark of the beast. You know, in the system be, where you can't eat unless you have the mark of the beast, especially in the great tribulation. Definitely the mark of the beast would be introduced around the middle of the tribulation. Could be a little bit before, but I think definitely by the time we get to the great tribulation, they're certainly going to be there and it'll be set up. Verse 11, but when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak, neither do ye premeditate, but whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye, for it is is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. So they were promised, these Jews in these end times, that they'll when they have to come before councils or, or authorities, when they're not taking the mark of the beast, or they're not worshiping the Antichrist in his system or his image, that God will give them the words to say, amen. Verse 12, now the brother shall betray the brother to death. So we see family betraying family in the tribulation. And the father, the son, and the children shall rise up against their parents and shall cause them to be put to death. So think about this. If if you get behind a world leader who has miracles and magical powers, even to a fool, the fool, the very elect. So that's why you would have family member betraying family member because they buy into this Antichrist one world um, that they think he's God or should be worshipped as God. Verse 13, and ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But ye that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So again, enduring to the end as a Jew, being protected um, some of the Jews are going to be protected. We know that for a fact. The time of Jacob's trouble is, you know, is not about the body of Christ. The, the church is gone. Verse 14, but when you shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of, of Daniel the prophet standing where it ought not, let him that readeth understand them, them that be in Judea flee to the mountains. And it goes on in verse 15 to come down from the housetops. Verse 16, leave the field take and, and not go back, turn back for to take up his garment. But woe to them that are with child in verse 17 and to them that give suck in those days. And verse 18, pray that your flight not be in the winter. Verse 19, for in those days shall be affliction, such as was not from the beginning of creation, which God created unto this time, neither shall be. So you couldn't say that about today's time, that there's affliction such as it was not from the beginning of the creation. We've seen Holocaust with the Jews. We've seen the Reformation, where millions upon millions of Christians were killed, burned at the stake, we're not living in that time. So we're not seeing that. This is a future time period. For in those days shall be affliction such as was not from the beginning of creation. In verse 20, the, and this is where the tribulation could be shorter than seven years, and except that the Lord have had shortened those days, no flesh should be saved. But for the elect's sake, who are the elect? That's the Jews. Whom hath cho he hath chosen, he hath shortened the days. Verse 21, And then if any man shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ, or lo, here is there, believe him not. 
Verse 22, for false Christ and false prophets shall arise. And here we see it, and shall show signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. So in the tribulation, uh, the signs, the wonders that the Antichrist and um, the false prophet will have will be pretty fantastical, essentially, even good enough to seduce even the elect. But God's gonna, going, going to put aside an elect of Jews for him. They will be protected in the wilderness, probably in Petra or, or south of the, the uh, Jordan River, and he will, they will be protected. But these are not our times. Now, you see some similitudes. You definitely see some rumors of war. You definitely have, have had false Christ. You definitely had had persecutions, afflictions, tribulation. But nothing like the one mentioned where verse 20, of, except the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh shall be saved. We're not seeing that kind of persecution. We're not seeing, you might see that in certain areas or certain countries that where Christians are being killed, but not worldwide. And when the mark of the beast comes, it makes sense that they would turn on family members that don't accept the mark or in their own religion, since they believe that's the religious system and, and God himself on earth, that they're going to demand that their members accept the mark of the beast. And if somebody, say, listens to that angel or th their blinders will be removed, where they'll be able to see uh, that Jesus truly was the Messiah and that he truly did die for them. Uh, well, let's go 24. But in those days, so that's future, after the, after the tribulation, so this is clear, so at the end of the tribulation, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give out our light. That's at the end. But if we go back to, we go down to 28. And I learned a parable of the fig tree where her branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves. You know, the summer is near. So at the end, of, so the end of this, so the, at the battle of Armageddon, there is a generation of Jews that will be alive. Verse 29, so ye in like manner, when ye shall see these things come to pass, Know that it is nigh, even at the doors. Verily, I say unto you that this generation shall not pass. So this is verse 30. Whatever this generation is, till all these things be, be done. So this, there is a group of people, Jews, the generation that will go through the tribulation that will live to see the return of Jesus Christ in the millennial kingdom set up. So whatever that generation is, as we don't exactly know when the rapture is, but there is a group of people that will see this. Verse 31, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and that hour, no man know, no man know, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. So this is when Jesus was on the earth talking. Uh, I'm sure Jesus sitting at the right hand of God the Father does know exactly when the second advent will be. This is saying that no man will know, not the rapture of the church, but this is in context to the second advent. No man will know the return at the second advent. Take ye heed, watch and pray, for you know not when the time is. Now, spiritually speaking, you can apply that to the church. I don't know the day or hour of the rapture. So, yes, it aligns spiritually speaking, but this is in terms of the parable of the fig tree. It's talking about that last generation of Jews that will go through the tribulation and see the millennial kingdom set up. And they're talking about second advent is that day that nobody knows. But spiritually speaking, you could make that argument. Yes, indeed, we don't know the day and hour. We know the season as we're we're, we're looking for our blessed hope, Titus 2.13. And verse 35, Wash ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh at even, or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning. So those are the four four watch times. I've done videos on that. Uh, I do think that that's interesting in terms of the rapture. Um, those would be the times that would make sense for the rapture. Uh, I would think it'd be based on 1 Corinthians 15. Um, it's at it's at the twinkling of the eye is either sunset or sunrise. I'd probably sunrise if I were to guess. When Jesus returns, it's the morning, right? The sun comes out, even if it's just for a very short period of time. But who knows? Maybe that's not the case with the rapture. Maybe this this is, again, a more of a second advent type verse. Lest coming suddenly he find you asleep, and what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. So he tells us to watch. I mean, if you're listening to Jesus, he wants us to watch for the return of Jesus Christ. Now, in our in our case, we're not going through the tribulation. We're not going to go through this, this great trouble like never seen on the earth before. All these days of dark and all these things, that these signs and wonders and, and the, the mark of the beast and the Antichrist, we don't have to deal with all that. But there is a generation of Jews that will go through all that. And this is what is mentioned here in Mark 13. Very important to keep that in mind when you read Matthew, Mark, 
Luke and John, yes, there is Christian doctrine in there, especially in John, but there is also sec a lot of Second Advent references as Jesus is talking about bringing in the kingdom. And when he talked about the gospel message, the gospel should be spread around, it says in verse 10, and the gospel must first be published among all nations. That is the gospel of the kingdom. That is, that's the end time gospel of the everlasting kingdom, which will be spread around by these, by the angels, by the two witnesses with power and by the 144 and probably everyone else who, who doesn't accept the mark of the beast will say, Hey, don't, don't take it. Remember, it's going to be clear what they're accepting when they take the mark of the beast. They're not going to be tricked into it. It's going to be a clear decision for them because I believe this everlasting gospel will go. It says here, as it says in verse 10, the gospel must first be published among all nations. So I think everyone's going to know the deal before that, before the mark of the beast is even cooked and whether they worship the image, uh, whether they take the mark at that time will be abundantly clear what it means and people will make the choice. And so there, there will be people saved in the tribulation. They'll call tribulation saints. They have their heads cut off. There are people that make it through the tribulation as well. And they're a part of the nation's judgment um, at that time, whether they help the Jews out or not, uh, determines whether they go to hell or whether they continue into the, in the live into the millennial kingdom. So these are all future timelines. But as we get closer to the tribulation, we see the characteristics in Mark 13 about the gener about the times and seasons that we live in, they do seem to be um, getting more like reality today, which isn't surprising. So certainly, spiritually speaking, you could apply the times of Mark 13, especially if one through nine. You know, I think those are very. I mean, it's dual application in my opinion, but it definitely can be talking definitely talking about the church age. And then that goes well with you know chapter two of of Second Peter, uh, talking about. Noah being spared and the times that he lived in. And, and, and Noah is a picture in his family. The A is a picture of the Jews going through tribulation, in my opinion. But the whole fact that they're on an ark and being rescued is sort of a picture of rapture as well. So spiritually speaking, it's a picture of rapture. But it's more of a type of the Jews going through the tribulation. Where I think Lot might be more, he's a Gentile, he was more of a type of being saved from destruction, probably more relative, rel like doctrinally relative to the rapture of the church, and not just spiritual, I think, like Noah's. But, but, but again, all the things that are going on with vanity and to people in today where they like evil, they speak of evil things, they have covetous in their hearts, they just evil, right, is, is going to is going to increase as we go closer and closer to the tribulation. So get saved by the blood of Jesus Christ today. Anyway, I know this was a little longer than I wanted. You know, there's a lot of false prophets, a lot of false teachers, a lot of wrong doctrines today. And we're to study to show ourselves approved and to, to take Mark 13 out of context completely without realizing that really hey, it's a, most of that chapter is really aimed at the tribulation. But yeah, there is some doctrine for us in our time and, and the times that we live in are getting closer to to what it will be like in the tribulation, whether we're, we're a few years away or months or, or whatever it might be. I don't know when the rapture is. Uh, be great if it was this year, but if it isn't, that's fine too. God bless. And have a great day.